Ready, stay down. There I go. There I go. Jackie Ray, you see her? Follow me. <laughs> we ain't got no dogs in this race this weekend, but we got some things to chat about. Uh, let's get into these honorable mentions. So this first one that I am going to be talking about um, apparently has a player that we were all very surprised to see leave the game because we thought he was the next coming of, uh, you know, Brett Favre or something. And that... Yeah. <laughs> That is Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck with the Colts. We were all super excited for his career, and it ended abruptly. It, before the 2019 season, he decided to retire at the tender age of 29, when is really kind of when most quarterbacks even really start their careers, and he decided to be out. Well, apparently, a Colts fan got a girl, and his girl is friends with Andrew Luck's girl. And we got some receipts. So apparently, Andrew Luck is trying to make a comeback. So let's get these tweets up or text messages. Girl, you won't believe this. Lucy <laughs> just <laughs> spoke a full <laughs> sentence almost. Haha, <laughs> no way. Clearly, they're talking about the baby. So these are good friends here. Yep, it was the cutest thing ever. Andrew didn't know what to do. <clears throat> so, Thursday, do you want to run to Saks with me and Lainey? Andrew is having a meeting with Jim around noonish. Absolutely. Jim who? Jimmy with the Colts. WTF. He misses football, huh? We told him he would. Misses is an understatement. If he does play again, this is the first step. We all hate when he's gone for a day or two at a time, but He'll be so much happier. We all know he misses it more than anything. Oh my gosh. Then they continue on. Well, I hope he does, but first and foremost, I hope he's happy and whatever he wants to do. Lucy will cry when he's gone at night now. No more lying with day before, with dad before bed. Aww. Okay. This is definitely like, clearly they're good friends here. It doesn't seem like a fake, chat or anything they were talking about the baby before it seemed like it smoothly just kind of transitioned slipped out jackie thoughts first of all um unless this was planned don't be releasing no text messages between me and you that's me and you that ain't everybody right. that is me and you we need to revisit our friendship contract because you this is a big violation unless i co-signed on it which i could totally see that being the case, like maybe they're like, okay, yeah, we're we're inching closer. Let's let's get some let's get some people talking about this, you know, to maybe move yeah. this needle along a little bit. Which I would I would get that. But I was such a huge supporter of Andrew making this decision. I know it was the tender age of 29, but that man just had injury upon injury upon injury. When he retired, his ankle was hurt, his leg was hurt. In 2015, he had a kidney yeah. laceration. That was the first time in my life I had heard about a kidney laceration. I was like, in football house way so i don't know i was right. a fan of him i thought he did it the right way like you're absolutely right most quarterbacks are hitting their stride right at 29 so this was kind of like nope no stride for him but at the same time mm -hmm. we also hear those sad heartbreaking stories about the life-altering tragedy that people have at the end of their career and he was getting in front of that to me and saying you know what who i am now i like and i don't want to be this burden or have these troubles and i'm going to get out now while my body is still kind of okay and i was a big fan of that but this is uh if he wants to come back of course i would support that too because i want him to be happy but i think your body would appreciate you reconsidering this i'm i'm just saying do you think it's because he really just insanely misses playing football or do you think that he's getting into some money trouble See, and that was my first thing. So I, you know, I Googled and I said, what is his net worth? What is his debt? And he, when he retired, his net worth was $40 million. To me, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go through $40 million in my lifetime. I might make that money grow actually, but that's who I am as a person. And we know a lot of these athletes yeah. all about the drip. It's all about the flash. 
we don't know is she is she going to sax you know fifth avenue is like what's her spending yeah. right so so i mean it could be it could be a situation where they're running into money troubles because it's just hard for me to wrap my head around oh i'm retiring because i want to stay healthy and my body is going through too much to now yeah, yeah i know my body is going through too much but i'm gonna put my body back in it that just seems a little weird to me yeah, and he see, he he retired very confidently. So I, I thought, yes, he's like, this is my decision. I am done. Um, somebody who is not so confident about what is going on with his situation um, is Deshaun Watson. So obviously, we have been talking like crazy about the fact that you know Deshaun wants out of Houston. Is that going to happen? Will the team give him that opportunity to you know entertain this trade? I mean, they said they were going to let him entertain the idea of, you know, helping who becomes the new head coach and stuff and new GM, but they didn't do that. So apparently they ain't doing this either. So um, this was actually released <laughs> on, um, you know, a hush hush level, I guess, because no actual names were mentioned. But according to two high level executives from different teams in the quarterback market, Texans brace ha brass have told interested teams that they will not be having any conversations about trading Watson. We've been told no from them directly. Um, so do you think there's truth to this? Do you think that the Texans are not going to let Sean Watson be even entertained in a trade? I do. I mean, the GM in his press conference, Nick, he was like, no, we're absolutely not going to entertain that. That was what he said in the press conference. And um, so I think they're definitely going to try to stick to their guns on this. But I think they're missing the bigger picture because this isn't like a Houston Rockets thing where they gave you know James Harden everything he wanted. And then he started whining and pouting at the end. This is literally you have put Deshaun Watson in a position to fail. You took everything from him that could potentially make him successful. And then when his interest started waning in the team, you said, OK, well, we're going to give you a say in the GM and the head coach. And then just kidding. Like every opportunity right. that you had to pair that relationship, you failed at. This is all their fault. And I think Deshaun is handling this right. He's like, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just but I will sit out this year. And I think ultimately the Texans are going to have to bend. They're just going to have to. Do you think if this relationship could be salvageable? Like, do you think the Texans, based on if they have a good draft, based on what they do when when it's time to start trading and stuff and getting other pieces, do you think Deshaun, if he is, you know, in a position where he's like, okay, I can work with these players, I can do this, do you think that he would then decide to stay? Or do you think he'll he'll still sit regardless of what happens if he's not traded? I mean, I heard Adam Schefter talk about it and he was like, they, basically, he don't care if the second coming of the Lord is in Houston. Deshaun wants out. You know, that's kind of what Adam Schefter said. But and I just think it's hard to repair now because you've lied to me and you put me into a position to fail so many times. Now I would have to go back into that situation knowing you really haven't changed. I just, I was yeah. the one who gave gave way to that. So um, if his agent can talk him into it, then maybe because I know he and his agent are really close. But I think on a personal level, he would just be he would just be jaded the whole time and then I, now i don't know how that reflects on the field so i don't know i think he should try to get out yeah well i do think i do want to say i do like their new head coach david um he's the first black head coach that the organization has ever hired so maybe he can persuade maybe they can get a little good relationship going in the off season and see what happens but that is it for honorable mentions it is time for athlete trash talk athlete trash talk we're going to get some music theme song. I swear we are. This Wait, one is this first yeah. one, though, no, because this one is more like former athlete turned commentator to sports writer trash talk. And I think it's hilarious. It's all Jared's golf's fault. <laughs> I'm blaming everything on Jared. Oh, no. I've been doing that. Isn't everything? I've been doing that. <laughs> I know. So long. It's all Jared's fault. I'm so sorry, Jared, but it, that's just who it is for me. Um, so this one is between Mike Silver of NFL Network and Troy Aikman, of course, of Fox. Troy Aikman's one of my favorite. I know Britt might not like him because he's horrible when he calls Dallas games. That is a fair comment. Um, but as a but former quarterback for the Cowboys, I love him. You know? right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's got that ass. Super Bowl that I can still talk about 25 years later. <laughs> Absolutely. But even sometimes I sometimes I love him calling the game. Sometimes I'm like, oh, just be quiet. But um, yeah. you probably see lines because, you know, Jared is apparently happy for the trade because he said he didn't feel appreciated. 
in LA. And then Mike Silver in his Sunday item, he wrote that he thinks some of um, some of that is Troy Aikman's fault because he said um, that he relayed points of kind of contention that Sean McVay had um, to the audience um, when he called the game. So Mike Silver said, quote, routinely um, trashed this season on Fox telecast, specifically those with Troy Aikman as the lead analyst. Goff could reasonably assume that McVay's words about his quarterback's play in the network production meetings were far from glowing. Troy Aikman said um, at that point, like, okay, I hear you. I hear you. But let me just grab both barrels and I'm going to shoot back at you real quick. Because he said, <laughs> he said, unlike Michael Silver, you always know you in trouble when they call you by your full government name. Unlike Michael Silver, I strive to be fair and balanced and do not have an agenda when doing my job. The record will show that I have been a strong supporter of Jared Goff over the years. Unfortunately for the Rams and Jared Goff, he did not perform at his best in the games that I broadcasted this season. I am confident that Jared would be the first to agree. Shots fired at everybody. I'm firing at Jared. I'm firing at you. Bang, 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 bang. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I have no all of that is facts all, Troy nailed all of that I, I got nothing to say yeah. bang bang I ain't got nothing to say either bang bang next one let's go to the next one Jackie <laughs> <laughs> now this one um, you guys remember uh, Martellus Bennett he was pretty vocal when he was playing and he's continuing that now that he's retired and I think he's touching on something that we all kind of know uh, but maybe we just don't talk about a lot. And, you know, now that he's in retirement, he's basically just letting it all out the bag and he's shooting directly at the NFL, which is, we'll get into that. But let's just kind of talk about what he said because he took to Twitter and let it all hang out in the most epic way. He said, honestly, football made me such an angry person. Everything bothered me. Football is interesting. Psycholog psychologically, it's some really dangerous shiznit. To really play the game of football, you have some effed up wiring in your head. We always say that. It don't make no sense for them big men to be moving at each other like that. Um, he said, it's chaotic. It takes years and years of brainwashing to go along with a lot of this stuff. Um, it starts at Pee Wee. That's when you got to watch who's coaching your kids and what they're teaching them beyond the game. Also facts. <laughs> he said, most right. of these coaches aren't good men. Most of them are egotistical, small Pee Wee heroes. Uh, they <laughs> they love the spotlight just as much as the players, LOL, and they, they be dumb, too. Okay, I mean, come on, Martellus, with this. Okay, and then he says, most of your favorite players aren't good people, ha, 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 like, for real, for real. So, you know, we've talked about this several times. I, I have always said you, something's fundamentally wrong with you. That's why when we see these players getting violent, I understand that we don't want them to be violent. But they're playing a violent ass game. You can't expect them to be altar boys. It, you got to be a little off to run out there and do the things that they do. I think he's yeah. just speaking un uncensored facts, but facts. <laughs> the 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 little D comment about the coaches though is so funny because he's. I mean, he's played with the Cowboys. He played with the Packers. He played with the Patriots, like the Bears. You know what I mean? I'm just like looking at like okay. So you talk about Bill Belichick here. You're talking like like it's so crazy that he literally like who who is he talking about has the little D energy? Is it everybody? Well, he, that part is the one that's like shots fired, shots fired. Wait, he basically said I'm talking about everybody except for John Kitna. <laughs> that's what he said in another tweet. Like basically. everybody. <laughs> Everybody, and I'm like, dang, nobody <laughs> should fire back at Martellus on this one because he got more, I'm sure. So just let this one lie. I'm just, yeah, just don't say nothing. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah. say nothing back. Nope. Well, uh, like hopefully, we got something to say back because it is time for our comments clap back. Let's get right into these. I want to see if we got some good ones this week. And this is Super Bowl weekend. Y'all better come with it and give us some good ones here. Yeah. Can y'all actually try to get the full story instead of making someone look bad? It's not like it's your job or anything. What is this story? Oh my god. That's um, I, think, I think that's the Tyler Hero one. Yeah, that's the Tyler Hero black oh, sliding in the girls' DM. It was a two thousand. I didn't know. I didn't. 
what's the rest of the story? If you got some juice, get to us so we know. Yeah, we saw what we saw. You saw the same thing. You don't have no extra yeah, information. Do, right. In there. Why do I know right. who's what and who's the, I, I know nothing, okay? We know what we know. know. We know what we know, right. and that's all we know. <laughs> Let's get to this next one. Um, okay, this is the, the um, oh, the claims against um, Khabib. Yeah, total false accusation. Think twice before making such disrespectful videos. So I get what they're saying. Her accusations were, in fact, false. We knew that. But I believe that was mentioned in that video. So we still got to tie. Yeah, yeah I, I saw that. You mentioned that yep. it wasn't true in the video, right? So this is this yeah. is off top. Uh, do we get to yell it this early? Title Ritter. Yes, because I, I even said, I was like, I literally said in the video, I was like, I mean, why would Khabib try to get a porn star killed? Right. It doesn't even make sense to me. It didn't make sense to me. I And I literally asked the question, like, y'all, like, do you even think there's any truth to this? Whatever the case is, this, like, it doesn't make sense. Khabib wouldn't even try to do that. Like, for what? I literally said that in the video. I didn't believe her for one second, but she did say that in an interview, which is what we're telling the story about. We said, she said this, and then I gave my opinion, which was, I didn't think that that was true, and then I asked all your opinion. So, Next yeah. one. Boom. Stop <laughs> me to tell her. Okay, right. the do double <laughs> instead of the fumble, okay, is now starting to turn into fake news. Donald Trump voice, LOL. Um, okay, I did this story as well. Um, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's not fake news. Kawhi did say that, so it wasn't fake news. I think, um, I don't know what I think. I think that you, and Kawhi's my, Kawhi's one of my favorite players, so I know I wasn't talking negative about Kawhi, and I said what he said. Right. Good try. Next one. <laughs> You guys are the worst channel. When did you guys become a gossip channel? Okay, so I think this is where people get it twisted. I know it seems like gossip because I, I get that a lot too, but these are athletes and this is their life. So we're gonna talk about their life, whether it's good or bad. Uh, you can consider it gossip, but the fact of the matter is this happened. She said he did this, so we were talking about it. Y'all need to get over it. That's not gossip, that's news. Anywhere else it'd be no. news. So, yep. Yep. Boo. <laughs> Next. Next one. Look, I don't care about Tyler Hero's love life, although you did click on this video. This is a sports right. channel. Talk about sports, not his love life. You clicked on the video. Right, you didn't have to watch it though. I'm so confused. Right. Yeah, and I always say you guys determine what we post. You guys mm -hmm. like videos. We do more videos of the ones that go viral. We, uh, we've time and time again tried to do very like super sportsy videos that are like just facts and whatever. Y'all don't click on those videos. And then they're like, oh, well, we're not making money off this video. We got to do this salacious story. Mm -hmm. I don't want I don't care. You think I care about Tyler Hero's girlfriend? You think Jackie Tyler cares? Well, oh, no. <laughs> we don't. <laughs> but what we do care about is these. Well, we actually don't really care about the Super Bowl either, but the Super Bowl is this weekend. Um, our games of the week have just dwindled down to one game of the week, and that is the Super Bowl. We're we're at the end of the road, Jackie. We're here. All the way to the, oh, to the oh. end of the road. <laughs> okay. I, actually, I don't care about yeah. this game at all. Like not at all. And I, I really like Patrick Mahomes. I do. And I like I said on the Fumble Live, I think he has to win this game because you're the baby goat. Tom Brady's the goat goat. You need to win. Good luck to you, sir. But outside of that, I don't care. It could be a tie. But I know it won't. But that would be amazing if y'all just played so long that they're like, screw it, this is gonna be the first tie in history. I, I don't care. Right. <laughs> yeah. I okay. I'm I want I really don't want I don't care about either team. But I would prefer the Chiefs win just because I really don't like Tom Brady. But then I don't know because I like Antonio Brown and I want him to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. And after oh. all the drama he went through the last couple years, it's just, oh. 
I'm getting anxiety. Crazy, crazy. I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but Tom Tampa Bay Tom Brady does not bother me as much as Patriots cool. Tom Brady. He's kind of cool. I, I, like, I'm like, okay, I so like this Tom. One of the players actually came out and said that um, right after they won the AFC championship or the NFC championship game, it's so weird to say Tom Brady's in the NFC. Right. After they won the <laughs> NFC championship game, um, that somebody start one of the players started crying because he was so excited, and Tom said, "Shut the f up. We haven't. We ain't done yet." Tell the guy to shut the f up. We ain't done yet. And I was like, I love <laughs> cussing Tom Brady. It makes me so happy and then everybody says that oh the patriot way went away when tom brady left but i'm like what was the patriot way because i don't feel like tom brady's part of the patriot way because he's so much funner i know that's not a right. word but he's so much more yeah. fun now that he's not with with the patriots yeah so i guess i'm just gonna wish good luck to both teams um no injuries good game high scoring play some defense and may the best man win. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And may us ha may we have uh, a lot of drinks and a lot of food and not put on any pounds with everything we eat. Happy Boom. Super Bowl weekend, y'all! Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Let us know who you want to win in the comments below, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. See you later. I don't know what to sing today.